Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to the channel. So it has been about a couple months since I've done one of these sit down talks. I think the last one was my vegan body transformation story. If you haven't already checked that out, I will link it below for you guys. But since then I have been overwhelmed with coaching clients. So I've been doing tons of Zoom calls, FaceTimes, voice calls, you name it. And it's been so awesome getting to connect with so many of you. And there seems to be a recurrent theme, a trend, and it's one that I know very much about so I can relate. So I thought I should just put this out there and make a video about it. I get a lot of questions, a lot of concerns about bloating and indigestion and gas and pain and constipation, especially when transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle, but not just when transitioning. So this video isn't going to be just about optimizing your digestion and elimination on a plant-based diet, but just some overall tips and tricks and tools you can use even if you're still eating animal products. I think you guys will find these tips and tricks really invaluable. So if you like these kind of videos, these sit down heart to heart chats, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button up in the corner and join us here at the Eat Move Rest headquarters. We'd love for you to be a part of the family. Leave me some love in the comments below. And as I'm going along, if anything sparks your interest or if you have any helpful tips and tricks that have helped you with your digestion and bloating, please share below. Be sure to follow Dusty and I daily on Instagram at Erin Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. We are always sharing what we eat, what we're doing throughout the day. Of course, tons of cute clips of Max in there as well. I should also say I am not a doctor. I am not a nutritionist. I am a certified health and lifestyle coach and I'm not prescribing anything to any of you. I'm simply sharing what has worked well for me, what has helped me over the years. So let's dive right into it. The reason I on a whim decided to sit down and shoot this video today is because last night I chopped a big rainbow salad like I typically do. There wasn't anything different about it, but what I ate beforehand was somehow disagreeing with the salad. For some reason, I had an intense amount of bloating and gut pain. So that is my first thing I want to address. So that feeling of fullness is not the same as feeling bloated. So fullness typically happens when you eat a high volume of food. On a plant-based diet, you're going to be eating a much higher volume of food because the foods are high in water content, they're high in fiber, they are lower in calories, which is a plus, but in order to transition from eating your standard American diet or just eating more animal products to fully plant-based, you're automatically going to have to eat a lot higher volume. Last night, like I said, I was feeling really a lot of pain and bloating, which isn't great. You don't wanna feel pain after you eat. Feeling full is okay. So if you have a little belly pooch or a food baby, as I like to call it, shortly after you eat, anywhere from like a half hour to an hour, things should tend to start to go down after that as the digestion process takes place. But if you're feeling pain, indigestion, just uneasy, discomfort, then that's not great. So we're gonna get into how you can help to ease that and how you can get your elimination flowing. It's definitely going to impact your weight and overall your mood. Like I mentioned in my recent vegan body transformation story video, I talked a lot about my fiber obsession. So when I was on the standard American diet and things finally started to catch up with me in college, as they can tend to do for people, which I am trying to recover and heal from emotionally, just the, uh, the guilt from that time in my past. I feel like I'm in a good place, but it still gets to me sometimes. Aside from that, you can go watch the video if you wanna learn more about my story. I was obsessed with fiber. So, you know, I was eating what basically the grocery store marketing and advertising and commercials told me to eat. So I'd walk through the aisles and you would see fiber one cereal on a box of cereal. And you know, that F word I had begun to pay attention to because my digestion was so bad, because my acne was so bad. And I kept linking this all back to the fact that I wasn't going to the bathroom regularly. So I started to look into the fiber one cereal, fiber one bars, even when they started coming out with fiber one yogurt. I don't know how they do that, but they do. 
and you know it didn't really do a whole lot for me so I just kept trying to search for more sources more places to get more fiber into my diet anytime I would look at a processed or packaged lean cuisine the first thing I would look to was the fiber count and then the caloric count so I was looking for things that were low in calories and high in fiber it was seriously my obsession I even went to the extent of different powders potions pills supplements and some of them worked temporarily but then eventually they would stop working so it was kind of like my body was wising up and it ultimately wasn't the fix that was going to be sustainable long term because like i said my body kind of got used to the products and then it was just like i was putting junk in my body and it wasn't doing it any good so let's jump into these tips and tricks that have helped the first handful, I would say like the first two or three, I'm gonna run through fairly quickly. They're probably gonna get some eye rolls because they seem like no brainers, but they're definitely still worth addressing because they are hugely important. And these are for anyone and everyone, not just plant-based, like I said, but anyone and everyone. So the first one is hydration. This has helped me tremendously. Even when I was a little girl, my mom would always say, you never drank water. I could not get you to drink water. You just said you were never thirsty. And still to this day, I have to constantly remind myself, and part of it now I attribute to eating such water-dense foods that I'm probably not as thirsty for that reason. But that being said, oh, that was pretty. That being said, I still value the importance of just plain purified drinking water. So we recently got a reverse osmosis drinking system and I really love it so far. I'll dive into that on a different day. But first thing I do every morning is I drink about 32 ounces of just fresh, pure, clean water. You can, I usually tend to warm it, so we've got an electric tea kettle. I'll pour the water in, just barely warm it, and sometimes I'll add lemon to it, but typically it's just water, 32 ounces. And what that's gonna do is start to wake up your cells. It's going to cause the cells to open up and be able to take information in from the foods that you consume throughout the rest of your day. So if your cells are awake, then they're better able to respond and digest food more adequately. On top of that, water is also just going to wake up all of your organs and again, prepare the body for digestion, prepare the body for what's to come. It's gonna flush out things that were sitting overnight, so hydration is huge. Number two is exercise. I try to change it up daily, but one thing I always pay attention to when I'm moving is, am I twisting a lot? Am I bending and stretching and scrunching? And anything you can do to really activate your core, your abdomen, all of those organs in there is going to help tremendously. So even if you're not ready to dive deep into like hitting it hard in the gym, I would suggest searching for yoga poses for digestion. There are tons of stretches. There's one where you can lay on your back and you take and cross your knee over your body and twist, and then you're twisting your upper body the opposite way. So just kind of doing those first thing in the morning and at the end of the day can help tremendously. And also if you can, sweat a little bit because the more you can sweat and move your body and bend and twist and move and dance the more you can boost your metabolism so if your metabolism is up your energy level is going to go up your digestion is going to speed up things are just going to move more quickly through your body finally another one that's a no-brainer is sleep so i've definitely noticed especially when it comes to bloating and going to the bathroom it's kind of awkward to talk about but i typically go to the bathroom in the morning when i wake up that is if I've slept for seven to eight hours, like I know that is optimal for most humans. It's optimal for me to sleep usually around seven hours. I will typically go to the bathroom in the morning and that's a good indicator that I stopped eating well before bedtime. I got good sleep and I was hydrated with my water in the morning. I'll typically go to the bathroom. Now, if I don't get seven to eight hours or if they're really crummy seven to eight hours, like if Max Max is kicking me in the head because he still co-sleeps with us, then I'll typically feel super, super bloated and puffy. I feel like my face retains water, my stomach retains water, and even sometimes my rings don't slide on and off as well. Typically that's you know one of the key indicators for me that I'm puffy and bloated and inflamed. So if you're not getting good rest, your digestion is gonna slow down. It's gonna get stopped up. So get that sleep. 
And like I mentioned, we typically try to stop eating well before bedtime. So our last meal of the day is typically three hours at least before we go to sleep. That being said, if it was a light dinner and I'm starving or if you're feeling super hungry, I would say go with something super light like a banana and call it a night, get well rested, and trust me, you'll feel a lot better in the morning. It's gonna give you more energy, things are gonna move along, like I said. So sleep is hugely important. And the reason why you wanna keep that window of time between your last meal and when you go to sleep is because you don't want your body to be working and grinding so hard on digestion because digestion uses so much of our body's energy. So you want your body to be digesting before you go to sleep. So when melatonin kicks in and you start to sleep, you're gonna sleep and be well rested because your, your body is not focusing on digesting, it's focusing on recuperating, it's focusing on regenerating and healing and just leaving you rejuvenated in the morning when you wake up. I also get a lot of questions about intermittent fasting and I would say yes, it's very beneficial. Let's say you stop eating dinner at 8 p.m. I would say the ideal number that we try to aim for with intermittent fasting is 13 hours. So that would mean we'd probably have breakfast at 9 a.m. I typically do a morning workout because again, it just wakes my body up, gets things moving, and energizes me throughout the rest of my day. So, you know, go to bed and then you leave that 13 hour window. It's going to give your body time to, again, heal, digest, work on whatever was left over from yesterday. That can definitely help with bloating and going to the bathroom regularly. My last no brainer is stress. Maybe it's not a no brainer, I don't know. There has been a lot of talk, a lot of research lately about the gut brain connection. And I can tell you it's hugely important and it's very very true that if you're not going regularly you're just not smiling <laughs> so back to my vegan transformation story this was a huge issue for me why i was so obsessed with fiber because i was not going daily it was probably every two or three days to be honest and it still wasn't satisfying so you can imagine how much compounded up in my body and every time I just felt more dense, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. So I got really foggy. Like I said, I had a lot of acne breakouts and I just seriously felt bummed out, weighed down, and it frustrated me. And I knew that it, it was impacting my mood because my relationships were struggling. So these two kind of go hand in hand. I can't say that if your digestion works out, then your stress levels go away, or if your stress levels go away, then your digestion gets better. I don't know which is first, I just know that they're so tightly linked that you've gotta get both dialed in simultaneously. If you're getting your healthy whole foods in and you're sleeping and you're eating well and you're hydrating, you know, stress and digestion are gonna go hand in hand. If you have too much stress, it's gonna to contribute to that chronic low grade inflammation, which contributes to bloating. So get your stress dialed in, do some meditation, do some yoga, sweat it out, and have some family time. So enjoy laughing. I tend to like hold a lot of tension in my shoulders and be like, feel like this, and I'm anxious and nervous. And so I found that, you know, laughter, it's like, it's so hard to be like tensed up. You know, you'd kind of just let loose. The final thing with stress is that fight or flight mode. So when our bodies go into fight or flight mode, it shunts all of our blood from our organs into our outer extremities because physiologically we were designed that, you know, if we were met with a predator, say you're living in the jungle and you're met with a panther, then your body shunts the blood to your extremities so you can flee and it even shunts it from your brain. So everything is going out into that, you know, just like animalistic, I gotta get out of this situation. But when you're feeling that way in today's high stress lifestyle and we don't have a real physiological reason to actually have that happening within our body, then, you know, digestion, again, stops up because there's no fire here. It's all in your extremities. So if you can get your anxiety under control, that was huge for me too. That was a big part of my transformation story, going plant-based, believe it or not, helped me tremendously with my sleep, which ultimately helped me with my anxiety. If you can get your stress and anxiety dialed in and minimized, then it's definitely gonna help 
in the long run with digestion and bloating. So now we're gonna transition into specifics on a plant-based lifestyle, especially if you are new or transitioning and you're having some discomfort, I hear that a lot. These tip tips might help you out. So number one is processed food that even goes for processed vegan foods, as well as foods that are high in sodium. Typically processed foods are high in sodium. So if you're getting a lot of excess sodium, it's definitely going to cause bloating, which could definitely add a few pounds if you look at a photo of yourself or if you look in the mirror, that sodium will definitely make you appear heavier. So avoiding the excess sodium that's not naturally occurring as well as processed foods and animal products in general. So going back to fiber, the hugely important F word, all animal products are void of fiber. That goes for meat, that goes for dairy, that goes for eggs, zero grams of fiber. Plant foods all contain fiber. There is no exception. Plant matter is fiber. So definitely you're gonna get better digestion as you go, but there are a few ways to do it more smoothly so that you're not having that pain or if you're going too quickly or not going often enough, these should help you a little bit more. The first thing I wanna address is food transit time. The reason that I tend to eat high raw throughout the day is because I'm following the natural progression of how long it takes certain foods to move through the digestive system. So number one is water. Water goes straight through. Number two would be juices. Juices don't contain fiber, but there is a little bit more information being carried in them. And after that would be smoothies a step further. They do contain fiber. It takes a little bit more digestive fire, but not quite as much as solid foods because it's essentially pre-digested or pre-chewed food going into your body. After that, we get into solid foods, starting with melons. So foods like honeydew, cantaloupe, and watermelon are going to be the most digestible of any solid foods, especially of fruits. And then after that, you get into other fruits. You get into, you know, apples and bananas and berries and all of that. And then further down the line is vegetables. So that's why I like, you know, I start my day with water, juice, smoothie, solid fruits, and then salads. So green leafy salads and other vegetables like that, again, are going to digest. Oh, they're gonna take a little bit longer than the fruits. Then you move down the line a little bit further and you've got your beans and legumes and grains and all of that stuff would take a little bit longer. And finally, at the very end, you've got your animal products. So meat can really sit in your system for quite a long time. And especially with the fact that there are all kinds of toxic compounds in meat, just imagine if not only are you eating meat, but it's sitting in there for a long time, it has a lot more time to do a lot more damage to your body. So not the best idea. Animal products are at the very end of the line. Other thing to pay attention to if you're transitioning is food combining. Dusty and I are not super rigid with proper food combining. We just do what has worked for us and we kind of forget the rest. So if you're really sensitive to digestive issues, you may want to be more rigid with following these proper food combining rules. I'm not going to dive too deep into it because there are a lot of like ifs, ands, or buts and exceptions to certain rules, but I will definitely pop a link to a couple graphics that I think are helpful in the description below. One that we do adhere by is we do not combine fruits with fats and we do not eat fruit after a cooked meal. So fruit is typically best when it can be consumed by itself, especially melon and other fruits in general as well. So just try to pay attention to, you know, if you're wanting like a healthy dessert after dinner time, you're like, oh, I'll have fruit instead of ice cream. I like the idea, but try satisfying your sweet tooth before your hearty meal. That's what we've started to do and it helps a lot. So, you know, maybe you have a smoothie as a late afternoon snack and then you cook your dinner time meal. Try it that way, see if it helps a little bit. If it still isn't curbing your cravings, then maybe just have something sweet and small, like a little piece of dark chocolate or maybe one date, but keep it small. Again, you gotta kinda play around with it because it can be really easy if you're sensitive to jump into digestive issues. Next helpful tip as you're transitioning is to pay attention to insoluble fiber and soluble fiber. So these are the two different types of fiber and every plant usually contains some ratio of both insoluble and soluble fiber. Some foods are definitely higher in insoluble while others are definitely higher in soluble. So insoluble fiber, if you think about it, it doesn't dissolve. So soluble dissolves in water. Let's take a look at insoluble fiber first. So it's gonna add bulk 
into your stools, bulk into your digestive system. So think about helping to move things through. And on the other hand, soluble dissolves in water. So it's going to give you more of that feeling of fullness. And again, going back to eating a higher volume when you switch to plant-based, if you're eating a lot of soluble fiber, you're gonna feel really full. Insoluble is going to help move some of that stuff through. You wanna incorporate both because both have their place and it's super important. But if you're getting too much of one and not enough of the other, I've definitely experienced this even while being plant-based and I can say I've still gotten backed up. So it's not a cure-all just because you go plant-based. For example, there's a lot of fruits that are high in soluble fiber. So if you're eating tons and tons of fruit, it's just gonna get packed in there and you need sometimes more of those veggies and whole grains to get things moving through, some more roughage, so to speak. So back to trusty Google, again, I've got an infographic here and I'm just gonna read off some examples of foods that are high in soluble fiber and then some others that are high in insoluble fiber so you can kind of get an idea of how to keep the balance and maybe figure out, okay, maybe I'm having too much of this type, maybe it's getting too bulky or maybe I'm getting too much of this type and things are just getting compacted and stopped up. So here we go. Insoluble fiber, some examples are whole wheat, whole grain, vegetables, wheat bran. So again, these are gonna add that bulk and help to add roughage and move things through. Soluble fiber, which is gonna help you feel fuller, can be foods such as oat bran, barley, nuts, seeds, beans, lentils, fruits, citrus apples, for example, strawberries, and many vegetables. So again, most foods have both, but you can look up charts that'll show you how much of each is in which food. You don't wanna to get too brainy with it. But again, like, like I said, if you're eating all fruit, no vegetables, that can be an issue. Or if you're not incorporating any beans and legumes, that can also be an issue. So another visualization that might help you guys to kind of understand this is if you think about a juicer. So everybody's had their juicer get stopped up and get clogged by probably putting too much celery in there <laughs> and it gets stringy and it just will not come out. So if you think about it at the same time, if you're eating too much at once, especially when you're transitioning and your body isn't quite used to that amount of volume yet, things can get really backed up. So pump the brakes on the volume. Say, you know, where I can eat like a family size serving of uh, green leafy vegetable rainbow salad, if you're just getting started, A, go with greens that are higher in water content and vegetables in general that are higher in water content and do a smaller volume of them. As your body adapts and get used to, gets used to the higher volume, it'll start to move things through more quickly. But things like binging and eating too much at once are definitely going to cause things to stop up. So I would definitely pay attention to volume, especially getting started. So on the topic of volume, eating a little bit lower volume until your body adjusts, another thing I'd pay attention to is maybe reducing the amount of raw foods. I eat a lot of raw foods, being on this pretty much raw till four lifestyle, as they call it, just because I love them and they seem to serve me well. That being said, if you're starting out, a lot of that roughage can really cause upset stomach just because it's your body's trying to figure it out and the bacteria in your gut is going to be quite different if you're going from processed food standard american food animal products in general so the more you eat certain foods the more you're feeding your gut bacteria your gut flora so it's going to proliferate because you're feeding it right it's going to grow and expand and proliferate and create more of that bacteria whether good or bad or just different so you're transitioning and say you're going from eating meat and potatoes, maybe potato chips, I don't know, but then you switch to eating juices and fruits and smoothies and uh, high raw vegetable salads and all that stuff. Your body isn't quite gonna know what to do with it quite as quickly at first and it's going to probably cause gut pain. I get a lot of people saying they get a lot of that lower belly cramping and indigestion and it's probably because you just gotta really be easy and gentle with yourself in the process and allow that gut flora, the good gut bacteria to proliferate and grow over time, starting with lower volume, starting with lightly steamed, lightly cooked vegetables, maybe starting with oatmeal for breakfast. That can be really soothing and comforting and helpful. So I would definitely pay attention to that. Over time, you can slowly add in more and more raw foods and see how you feel, but don't be afraid to keep that health, healthy balance as well. Even when you get to a good spot, you should still try to incorporate a lot of these 
whole grains, beans, legumes, hearty stews, things like that at dinner time, totally fine. Even potatoes and sweet potatoes. So I think there's a big misconception that grains can cause major issues and that they're not good for us and the same goes for beans. So there's a difference between a super processed Wonder Bread or a white rice or those kind of foods, they're nutrient void and a lot of them are genetically modified. So I would number one, definitely try to buy organic, not just with your processed foods, not just with your grains and beans, but every fruit and vegetable. Organic foods can definitely help to modify your gut bacteria in a good way when they're free of herbicides and pesticides and chemicals that can tend to, again, stop things up. So going organic and with grains and beans specifically, something that can be very helpful is soaking them. So I know in a pinch it can be really easy to open the canned beans and that's perfectly fine. We do it and we just make sure to buy organic BPA free cans. But if you're having issues, especially getting started, then definitely soak. So we typically buy like our chickpeas and black beans and things like that in bulk dry and then we will pour them in a bowl fill it with filtered water and soak them overnight typically i would say six to eight hours is usually the sweet spot and that helps to kind of get that seed ready for you know germinating essentially so if it were in the ground and it had rained it would give that signal for that bean or that grain or seed or nut to open up and then the life force is exposed. It's, it's broken into, so it makes it more bioavailable to your body and easier on digestion. So definitely look into soaking. And last but not least, prebiotics and probiotics. So I've mentioned before a specific company whose probiotics I love. This isn't sponsored, but I love seed probiotics. So I'll link them below. You can use Eat, Move, Rest for a discount code. Um, this is something I started incorporating back into my life when I was pregnant because I had read a lot of research around um, healthy gut uh, for a healthy pregnancy. So I started taking seed probiotics. I can link a podcast interview on our favorite ritual podcast with the formulators. It really just opened my eyes, blew my mind. It's a prebiotic, probiotic all in one. And it just gives your gut that little boost that it might need, a little bit more of that digestive fire to be able to handle more of these fibrous plant foods, so definitely look into a probiotic. Another thing that many of us are deficient in is magnesium. It kind of goes under the radar. We are all focused on this plant-based diet, focused on B12 and D3, but I would say maybe try experimenting with magnesium, which is typically great for recovery from athletics or physical activity because it can help with muscle recovery and pain as well as sleep. It really helps you with sleep. And one of the side effects that it's not typically used for is that it definitely helps you go to the bathroom. So we use Sun Warrior, absolutely love it. Dusty really swears by it. He's gotten really into using it a lot because of having some struggles with his sleep in the past and he swears by it. So he kind of got me on the wagon too, had me try it to see if I would sleep better. And you guys, this is hilarious. If you've stayed and watched this video this long, then props to you, thank you so much. <laughs> but comment below if you actually hear me say this. The first time I used the magnesium, I slept so hard, I didn't wake up to go to the bathroom, I wet the bed. I wet the bed, I wet the bed, I wet the bed. <laughs> so it definitely, definitely works. Helps you sleep like a rock, again, helps with muscles and definitely helps you go number two in the morning. So you might be deficient in magnesium. It's at least worth looking into. And that is really it, you guys. So again, just running through things, you know, looking into hydration, exercise, sleep, stress levels, sodium, processed foods, staying clear of those, practicing proper food combining, soaking things, even sprouting. I've gotten really into sprouting, so we'll have a video on that coming soon looking at the food transit time and not doing things in reverse, not eating cooked food and then a bunch of watermelon because that's a major bloater. And you know, that's about it. It's, it seems like a lot. Hopefully you took notes. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest fam. We would love to have you join us. Leave me some love, leave me some chip, tips and tricks in the comments below as well. Let's help each other out to grow healthier together. And like I said, follow Dusty and I daily on Instagram at Aaron Stanzik, at DB Stanzik. We're always sharing fun things every single day on there. Eat, move, rest, your best. Bye guys.
We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.